So we're back at Calypso. We just picked up the four new batteries at Hamilton Ferris in Bourne. And in case you're looking for batteries, we do recommend them. They are our partner with Cruising Calypso. We recommend Hamilton Ferris for batteries and other electrical needs for your boat. So check them out. I will put a link to their website down below in the comments. So we have dropped off the batteries here at Barden's and they're gonna have, have them install the batteries. And so now we're back here to um, finish up the engine anodes. We did have made some progress uh, earlier in the week and so we're going to finish up the engine anodes hopefully and try to get replace the one on the generator. So stay tuned. So we're in the engine bay of Calypso, here are the CAT 3126s, and so we have identified where the anodes go. I think we touched on them a few weeks ago, but let's just take a quick look as to where they are. So on each engine, there's two right there, there is one here in the coolant tank right there, see that brass? There are two here. There. There are two here and he here in the engine oil cooler. There is, I'll show it to you on the other engine, there's one here in the exhaust elbow here, and we've just pulled that one out, and I'll show you that one in one second as to why that one's out right now. And then um, there are two in the transmission, in the transmissions as well. So let's take a look at how these go. So in advance, what we purchased is this kit. We got it from BoatSinks.com and it's specifically made for the 3126. As you can see, it has three different size anodes in it. It has this size right here, so that we, these are pencil anodes. It has the smaller ones right here. Turn this over here so you can see them. And then these large fat ones. Now, th this type and this type come with new brass caps. These are intended to be removed from the existing brass cap and screwed into the, the E cap and then replaced back into the engine. So it's a complete kit. You can get it from BoatSinks.com. I will also put a link to that in the comments below. Just much easier than trying to order them individually. And what you're going to find is so we've already started to pull some of these out. So here is one of the zincs. As you can see, he is, it is, while it is still largely the, the length it was originally, if you start to dig at it, it comes apart. And that's a sign it has to be replaced. Because we did pull a, two out of the engine that were, while they were, had a little bit of sort of build up on them you know you could they were they were intact I mean look at this with my thumbnail I am digging into that and so that is that is shot so what in that case these we just used this one right here in its complete form you take it out you slide it back in you screw it in you're good to go a few more examples this is one of those small ones take a look at that that is completely eaten away. Again, it's about the same length, but that is crumbling. So that one, and you have to be super careful because not only does the main body crumble, the threads start to crumble. And so what happens is when you go to remove this from the brass cap, you have to be super careful. And while it may not turn with fingers, I use a set of pliers. And as you start to turn, hopefully if all goes well, it'll back and unscrew out of the cap. However, in some cases that wasn't the case and it snapped off here, right at the cap. And so what you end up, and here's an example of the cap here without a zinc in it and it's just threaded as you can see inside there. So what I found 
is the way to get it out. There are probably several ways to get the um, remaining zinc out of the cap. You know, uh, you can probably drill it out and then retap. I think that sounds a little bit elaborate. What I did is I actually soaked this in muriatic acid. Muriatic acid is a solution of 25% hydrochloric acid and water, essentially. And because zinc is the least noble metal, the hydrochloric acid will attack the um, anode material um, before it attacks the brass in the cap. So it takes probably four to six hours to eat through that um, that material left in it, but it does a pretty good job. You know, muriatic acid is acid, so you, always, of course, want to wear gloves when you're touching it. You want to keep the, keep it in an open area. The fumes are something you don't want to inhale. So um, that is definitely one way, and I have found it to be fairly effective in getting the remaining of the anode out when it doesn't screw out on its own. So here's a perfect example of one that just broke off. You can see this one was pretty far gone. And I was super careful trying to get it off, but that's all that's left there. And I need that cap. So what we're going to do is grab our cup of muriatic acid. And again, stay clear. And just place that in. And it's sort of like Alka-Seltzer, right? If you can see that fizzing and bubbling, it starts eating away at that... Um, at that zinc so we'll let that one soak for a bit and do the other so we're gonna try to get this one right here on the opposite side right over here it is down there now I was able to get my smaller socket onto it but of course it was too tight so I'm now gonna try to get the breaker bar on it and while the breaker bar fits it is just a little bit heavy to position so, you know, like everything in most boats, maybe your boat is different, but access is either hard or impossible. You know, rarely is there easy, although a few things are accessible. But I just want to point out one more thing while we're here, is it's so easy to overlook. Your um, engine fire extinguisher system, it's always a good, just to check the gauge. In this case, you can see my needle is right in the middle of the green, but often on older boats, they just get... Um, they slowly leak at a very small rate and they get into the red and then it's not useful anymore. So just check that. If it's not in the green, you can have these recharged or have them replaced. It's just a little bit of safety. Even though this is a diesel boat, it's always good to uh, make sure that is um, up to, up to um, pressure. And also while you're here, it's always a good idea just to do a general look-see to make sure everything looks okay after the winter. In other words, even though the engine has not been under running and under pressure, so you probably won't see any leaks yet. And the first time these are start up, and probably in another week or two, um, that's a time you want to check for any leaks, just anything that looks unusual. Check your hoses. In other words, if any hoses, any soft hoses seem overly soft, you know, now that's the time to replace them. And, um... Take care of that because the time to replace them is not when you blow a leak and you're underway. So I highly re recommend taking care of that. So let's go ahead and get this pressure cap back on. There we go. And we'll check the other one momentarily. So, all right, let's see if this breaker bar does the job. So here are two more zincs in the aftercooler and these, let's see here, I was able to loosen that, let's see if that comes out, just turn gently as I said, don't want to break the threads. That looks like someone put pipe tape on that, which you can do. And then you just want to replace it with another one. Let's wipe that off.
they just pretty much go in hand tight. Like that. And then back in to their spot. I mean, if all goes well, this is not a particularly big job. It's a common, what, you, what you're up against is a combination of access and stuck bolts and broken anodes. So we'll go ahead and do the rest of those and keep moving. Okay, so we're at the generator. Now, according to what I could find uh, from the manufacturer online, the zinc for this is one of two places, depending on when the engine was manufactured. It's either on top, or God forbid, it's on the back side of the engine. So let's start by opening, the, taking these panels off like that and like this this is the generator polar it is a nine kilowatt generator it's an, as I mentioned earlier it is new it's only two years old the original generator was probably a Westerbeek um, but this is nine and I think it has 250 hours on it so you have fuel filter oil filter you can check the oil right there uh, that's the, the starter belt which I bought another one but the, now that I look at that belt it's actually okay that's the water pump if you recall last week we changed that now according to the manufacturer there are some wing nuts right here wow there actually are wing nuts here imagine that and with these wing nuts off you can pop the top of this off so where are we going to put these put those back there should be another one right here somewhere there is right in there Ooh. the last thing we need is to lose these nuts all right now according to that oh what do you know it does come up and then it slides out that you know it's kind of amazing when something actually works the way they say it will all right so that's that so now the zinc is either so that's the there's the tank i have a terrible feeling here that it's on the back side of the engine unless one person indicated that it's under here so that's the oil f that's oil fill right there is it no that's coolant fill that's coolant fill right there It would be too easy if it was right on top, wouldn't it? All right, be right back. We're gonna see if we can get back to the back of the engine. So I think we're gonna have to take a pause and we're going to have to do a little bit more research as to where though that zinc is on the generator. As I say, I felt behind here and I think I feel it, but I can't be certain. And although I, you can see here, I've got my lighted mirror which helps quite a bit. I wasn't quite able to see it. So I'm just gonna check the Kohler manuals and see where that is so I can um, pull that out next time. So until then, we're gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, please comment and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell and we will see you next time. Later.